Good morning, folks. Started in a minute or so. Good morning. Okay, got a couple things to talk about. I'll, uh, oh gosh, I keep yawning every time I open my mouth, a yawn comes out. Um, yeah, we've got a couple things to talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about our project a little bit more. I know that uh, I talked about it a little bit on um, Friday as I learned about it in real time. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll talk about the, the project a little bit. And um, we are going to learn something pretty interesting today. Um, we're going to take a look at um, some of the stuff that we know already about like quadratic functions. Um, and we're going to spend a little bit of time in Desmos. Uh, so we'll take, take a look at some, some Desmos graphs. And uh, and yeah, I think I think it'll be I think it'll be pretty neat. So yeah, we've got uh, a fun class today. Oh, this is the grade nine stuff. So I just have something on my iPad. I had to clean off. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, we got eight folks watching here. So that's about uh, uh, about a third of our class. So. Maybe I'll, I'll get started now because um, I think uh, a lot of a lot of you are watching uh, after the fact. Yeah, I can see that uh, 23 people watched the video from Friday, so uh, that tells me that people are watching it after the fact. Okay, so uh, here's what uh, here's what our plan is for the day. Um, I'd like to talk about the project. Oops. Geometry mode. Project. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the assignment. I posted a new assignment on Google Classroom yesterday, as you probably already noticed. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, and oh, yeah, I want to talk about next week. There will be some changes next week. Um, and then we will talk a little bit about polynomials. Okay, so the last topic, of course, being the actual course content, the mathematics. Okay, so let's talk about the project. So, uh, as you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the project has, has changed a fair bit. Um, the project is now going to be an assignment. So it is now in the assignment category. It is no longer like a final assessment, like it's not a replacement for, uh, excuse me, for a final exam. So it is no longer a final uh, exam uh, replacement. It is just an assignment. So it takes the same kind of weight as an assignment would. So it's not like it's worth 30% of your grade or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it'll be worth uh, uh, quite a bit less than, um, uh, what we'd initially uh, intended on. So uh, with respect to that, um, I gave it some thought about about how this could be fair. So I don't think it would be fair if I were to say, okay, 
here's here's our assignment um, or here here's our project I want you to do this big project huge project right and that's what I initially had in mind right like a like four topics talk about how it's all interconnected all of that cool stuff give deep understanding and, and all of that um, and then all of a sudden it's like okay yeah I want to do this big project but it's only going to be worth the same amount as a regular assignment right and and to me that that doesn't seem fair to you so uh, I, I think that if, if it's only going to be worth the same amount of your grade as a assignment then I think it should be about the same amount of work as a assignment so I'm gonna narrow it down a little bit for us so I know that we've we've gone through a lot of changes and uh, I'm, I'm really sorry to, to, to change this stuff even more but I'm hoping that this change will at least alleviate some pressure and make it easier for you my, my intention to make this change is not to make things harder it, it's it's to make it easier for you and to relieve you of extra work okay so the project is now an assignment and that means that it should be about the same amount of work as an assignment okay it shows it should be about the same amount of work as an assignment um, so the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna narrow it down it started off as four topics I, I keep writing topic topics topics okay it is no longer four topics it is now two topics okay so choose two topics any any two topics from our course and talk about how they are related um, so so we're I'm just gonna narrow it down from four to two um, and in terms of uh, length uh, about uh, one to two pages of written work equivalent okay so so what I'm saying about that is that if you were to do like an essay paper kind of uh, article kind of kind of ha like a written um, project which is totally optional right you can you can still do whatever you want in terms of what the project looks like so if you would like to do a video you can still do a video you can do anything uh, however the amount of work that you do should be about one to two pages or about one and a half pages of, of written work so if you were to make like a script of everything that you're going to talk about in the YouTube or in, in, in the video that you make if you wanted to make a video um, you it, it would be about it should be between one and two pages um, if you actually do a written assignment or an article or something then aim for one to two pages um, so so think about it in terms of that in terms of like the the scope and the, the depth that you go um, before I would have expected something more like four to five pages but now I'm, I'm really gonna narrow it down to about one to two pages so so think of it more in terms of an assignment that you have a long time to work on so uh, initially if I had if I had learned about this earlier I probably would have just got you to start on this maybe a week before the due date so so we have a lot of time on this I, I don't want this to take a lot of time um, because it's only worth the same amount as an assignment so so we're just gonna narrow it down and if you've already sort of chosen four topics and you if you've already started um, you can still do four topics if you want, but I'm, I'm only I, I will mark the, the 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 your understanding of your best two topics. Um, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that uh, that you haven't got too far in terms of of your your research and stuff like that. Um, that uh, that yeah, that doing just the two topics is is going to be okay for you. Um, so yeah, there's that. And as for the um, the topic map. Still happening. Okay, I still want that to be ten topics. Um, so that I, I mean, I really don't think that this should take too too long. 
Um, I kind of, I, I, with the grade nines, I, I, I gave them like a, a very quick example. I'll just kind of show you what I'm, I'm talking about. So here's the grade nine page. Um, yeah, so I made, um, I made, so, so this is the grade nines. I'm expecting one page for them. So don't, don't read that. But, um, so this is kind of what, what I expect. So something like this, they don't have to be massive topics. They can be just little topics, right? So just say something like, okay, here's functions right? Uh, I've got functions, I've got linear equations, relations, system of equations. Here, here's four topics, right? And, and this, this took me like 30 seconds, right? And, and keep in mind, I'm a math teacher and I, and I know the stuff that we're doing really well. So of course, I don't expect this to take you 30 seconds. But if I can do it in 30 seconds, I feel like you could do it in an hour, right? To, to find like four topics and I, and, and I want you to do 10 topics. So, so I'm thinking that this would probably take between one to two hours, right? Um, so I, I, I don't want this to take too, too much time. So these are the topics. And then the, the, the connections between them can be very brief, right? So between functions and relations, you can just say, oh yeah, some, some relations are functions, right? And now we didn't do functions and relations. We were doing that in grade nine, but maybe you know the difference between a function and a relation already, um, right? Okay, linear equations are functions. That's, that's the relationship, that's, that's how they're connected, right? Linear equations and systems of equations, right? There, are linear e there can be linear equations in systems, right? So you don't have to go super in depth into the, uh, the connections. You don't have to like do a huge explanation of each topic. So here's an example of an explanation of a topic if you wanted to include them to say, oh yeah, we've got systems of equations. There's many equations, many variables to solve for, right? Um, the project is still gonna be due on June 12th. Um, so so yeah, the, the due date, and I'll, I'll just write that down. Um, due, due, June 12th still. Okay, so same same due date that, uh, that we had uh, from before. Um, Although it is the, the earlier due date because I did change the due date, but I, I really don't want to have to change the due date again. Um, so the due date is is June twelfth. Um, so uh, so yeah. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. You can let me know in the chat or you can you can message me privately too. That that would be fine as well. Um, so that is our project. I'll give ourselves a little check. If if anyone has any questions about that in the chat, I'll just address it um, as they come. Um, but as far as the the project is concerned. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much all the changes, uh, that, that I, I, I can think of that, that I need to tell you about. Um, oh, I will, um, I will post new info on Google Classroom shortly. Okay. So we'll have yet another updated, uh, rubric and all of that fun stuff. Okay. Ugh, it's got an itch. Okay, uh, project. Okay, so we talked about the project. Next up, uh, let's talk about the assignment, or I guess I haven't talked about it yet, so that's what's next. So I'm gonna pull the assignment up on my computer right now just so I can look at it while I talk to you guys. Um, I posted a new assignment yesterday. Um, I, think it's a, I think it should be a pretty fun assignment. Um, it's a little bit shorter than the last one. Uh, it covers two topics. Um, that being uh, systems of equations and trigonometry. So those are the latest topics we've kind of been looking at. Um, the first three questions are, f I'm, I'm hoping are, are straightforward, um, that there's really not a lot for you to like read in between the lines, no trick questions or anything like that. Just kind of straightforward, do this, do that, you know, um, kind of run of the mill, kind of standard, textbook questions. Um, the fourth question is, you know, it's a, there's a word problem, you know, but again, it's not, it's not too, too bad. Um, but the, where the, the, the heart of the, um, the assignment is question five. Um, by the way, question six as well is just, uh, one question on trigonometry. Um, I just want to give, want you to give me an example of measurements that lead to, to uh, the ambiguous case. So where you have two triangles with, with the same um, uh, uh, information uh, that, you know, the, the, the angle side side. 
case. So, so yeah, just give me an example of um, those two triangles, uh, and and that that should be it. So, so again, number six isn't shouldn't be too too bad. Number five, I'm anticipating um, some people to be asking questions about it. Um, I really wanted to ask, you know, uh, just one one challenging question. Um, so the, the 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 thing about this one is that the challenge is not so much um, the challenge is not so much in the oops. Uh, okay, so so question five. Um, it relates um, quadratics and systems. Okay, so we've done a lot of, I keep, I don't know why the CS today, I'm, I keep writing just S instead of CS, quadratics. Okay, um, in question five, it relates quadratics to systems. The, the part that I think will be challenging is, is the actual bit on quadratics. So um, so in, in question five, the, the quadratics portion kind of deals a little bit with kinematics. Okay, which is the, the area of, um, of physics that deals with motion, and um, it is actually on our uh, our grade ten advanced curriculum to talk about kinematics and how the, it's related to quadratics. Um, now that said, um, I do not intend to be talking about physics formulas, um, but one one thing that I, I will tell you just right off the hop, and I and I do mention this in the hint for question number five. Um, is that the way you can, okay, so let's say that we have a position versus time graph, okay? And let's say we graphed um, something that was like, uh, that I, I, th I throw a ball up in the air, or like, here, I'll just show you. Like, like let's say I throw this calculator up in the air, right? And you can kind of see it, it goes up, or I guess you, you couldn't really see that. There we go. Um, it goes up uh, like pretty quick, and then it, and then it starts to slow down, and then it comes back down, right? And it's it's a nice gradual thing, much like a parabola. And in fact, um, the 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 way that the position uh, or like the height, we can actually describe this as height. Um, it actually is a parabola um, that looks something like this. And well, we can know we can you know if I if we take a look at a parabola, you know we know a few things. Um, you know we 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 know uh, the vertex, right? We know about the x-intercepts, intercepts. Okay. Um, but one thing also that that we know about with with parabola is the stretch factor. Oops, stretch factor. And usually we call that by the letter A. Right, that's that's letter A. Now, with um, with kinematics, and and this is where things get a little bit confusing. Um, and this is this is the one piece of information that you don't have, and I and I did mention it in the assignment. The stretch factor for A when you're dealing with gravity is for gravity. Um, it is one half of 9 point, or I guess negative 9.8. And 9.8 is um, the measure for gravity in meters per second squared. Now, we're not, I'm not going to get into this because this, this would, this would involve a fairly, I mean, it's not super complicated, but, but it would take a lot of time to, to describe why we take that gravity and we divide it by two. Okay, so we're just we're just going to we're going to leave it as is. Um, so that that is that is our stretch factor. So our stretch factor is for negative four point nine. Okay, so when you're when you're thinking of what kind of um, parabola or which which what which quadratic equation or quadratic function you're going to be using to solve this, one thing that you may, you actually don't technically need this. But it'll make it a lot easier if, if I just tell it to you that the, the, the stretch factor, gravity here, is negative 4.9. So whenever, whichever, whichever um, 
uh, way that you decide to do this, you can you can do this by looking at a, a, a quadratic e equation in vertex form, or maybe you could be have it in factored form, or even standard form if, if you really want. Um, no matter which form it is, you will have a stretch factor of negative 4.9. So I just really wanted to be clear about that ahead of time, um, that um, this isn't this isn't something that I, I really want to go super deep into in terms of instruction because this is not a, a physics class it is it is a math class but this math class does deal with some physics concepts like kinematics um, so so yeah uh, the 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 stretch factor for a quadratic equation that that describes uh, the motion of of how high something is uh, off the ground with respect to time. Is, uh, has a stretch factor of negative 4.9. So you do, you actually technically don't need this. But this question, it's, it's, it's if you use Desmos and you use this fact that the stretch factor is negative 4.9, it's actually not super challenging. Um, but if you want to do it by hand and if you don't use this fact that it's negative 4.9, it's still possible to do. It's just much more challenging. But Desmos makes it much, much easier. Uh, not to say that this is an easy question, regardless. This is a challenging question for sure. Um, but uh, using Desmos and using the fact that the stretch factor is negative 4.9 will really help you out. It really, really will. So, um, so yeah, like I said before, the main, the main part of this question that makes it challenging is the quadratics. Once you've got the quadratics, the systems part, I'm hoping, kind of just sort of falls into place. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. So that was the assignment. Talked about the assignment a little bit. Um, next week, okay. So next week, um, I don't know if you guys have heard this yet, um, but as of June first, teachers are back at school. Okay. Uh, so teachers are back at school. Um, students may be invited for one on one conferences. Conference is. Okay. Um, remote learning will continue. So it's not like we're going back to school on June 1st. Do not mis misunderstand me. We are not going back to school on June 1st. I am going back to school on June 1st. So I will be doing some live streaming at school, um, but there will be a change to our schedule. So uh, after June 1st, there will be a change in our schedule. Okay, and I still haven't decided what that change will be, so I will let you know. Um, but the, the way it'll change is, is it'll most likely be that we will uh, have uh, classes uh, every second day. Um, but uh, I still w want to think deeply about which day we would take off. It w if it would be even days or odd days of the school day cycle. Um, so there is uh, going to be a change in our schedule. Um, uh, yeah, so so yeah, this is this is important because I will be um, uh, at school. I'll be streaming at school just in my regular classroom. Um, but the most important part of this is no more goose. So goose is no longer going to be my teaching assistant. Um, she's retiring from uh, from her her career. It was a short lived career. But I think that um, she made a, a pretty, pretty big difference in uh, a lot of people's lives. So uh, um, maybe on Friday we can have a little party uh, for Goose, uh, a little retirement party. Um, I think that would be pretty fun. So uh, yeah, remote learning will continue, but um, uh, it'll, it'll, uh, uh, there will be a, a change in our schedule. Um, and students may be invited for one-on-one -on -one conferences. Um, so like if, if you're struggling or something like that and, and you're, you're struggling to hand in assignments because of this recovery learning, 
uh, you may be invited uh, for like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing just with a, a meeting with your teacher um, not necessarily me right like it could be another one of your teachers who, who invites you um, just to see what we can do to tr try to get you to hand some stuff in before the end of the year um, and, uh, and that kind of thing so yeah uh, so now we've talked about uh, next week oopsies that's not what I wanted to do there we go so next week now let's finally uh, after half an hour of, um, of a talking head let's talk about polynomials what do you say yeah okay let's do let's talk about polynomials okay there we go Okay, so this topic, um, so this topic is it's part of our grade ten advanced curriculum, but um, I think it's important for you just to to understand where these things are coming from. Um, so this is technically um, because we we are in the the advanced stream, so we we have a curriculum that is 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 based on the the Manitoba outcomes, um, like all the things that we want. Manitoba students to be able to do but we kind of shuffle these these topics around in advanced and we kind of try to squeeze more of the advanced ones in at an earlier age and then kind of keep repeating them throughout the year so a lot of the topics that you see this year in grade 10 advanced you'll see again in grade 11 advanced um, and then same with with grade 12 advanced um, this 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 topic in particular is one that that you will see quite a bit um, and this this it actually is a grade 12 outcome so this is this is something like if you look this up in the uh, Manitoba curriculum graphing polynomials is actually a grade 12 outcome now we are not going to cover the whole thing we're just going to sort of kind of dip our toes in the water um, because we don't have all of the prior knowledge that you need to, to fully you know do this entire topic um, but we what, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of see if we can develop like a general understanding of how this works um, and so that's 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 kind of what we're doing um, so I want to I want to just talk about um, sort of the the, the, the fundamental uh, sort of driving force of this of this topic and um, and then we'll, we'll see where that takes us okay so Okay, let's do this. All right. Um, okay, so there's there's two things that I want to uh, start off with. The first is the fundamental theorem. Theorem. Theorem of arithmetic. Okay, quite possibly one of the most foundational facts in all of mathematics. That's why it's called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, And the fundamental theorem of arithmetic has been known for thousands of years. We, we knew this um, before we even were writing numbers down in the same way that we do. We knew this um, well, back when when mathematicians were doing just geometry, when there was before algebra. So we've known about this for a very long time. Um, and the idea of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is that any integer, or any I should say any positive integer, can be written, or I should we say it can be factored into a product of primes. And this factorization is unique. Okay? This factorization is unique. Okay, isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? What does that what does that mean though? Right? What does that mean? So um, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is basically talking about um, well, I mean, it really depends on, on, on your background and how you think about integers and, and numbers and stuff. But, but one expression of this is, well, let me just write, what does this mean? What does this mean? 
Okay, well, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic basically says, okay, let's say you got the number 24, right? By the way, I just uh, finished watching season one of 24. It's a, it's a TV show from um, 2001. Uh, I, I, I watched the show way back in 2001. I was, I was a huge fan and I rewatched it and it, it was not as good as I remember, but I still watched the whole thing. It's 24 episodes, one hour long, all taking place in real time. Very cheesy, terrible acting, lots of action, um, kind of a fun movie. Anyway, let's say that we want to factor 24 and let's say we do it with a factor tree. Well, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells us it does not matter which numbers we choose first. Like most people choose two first, right? Two, 12, and then two again, two, six, and then two again, two, three. So here's the prime factorization of 24. It's two cubed times three. Now, someone else might say, okay, well, I want to factor 24 in a different way. And how about instead of uh, 12 and 2, how about 4 and 6, right? Well, 4 is 2 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, and look at that. Even though we chose different numbers to begin with, we're still left with the same prime factorization. So these are the same even though our factor trees are different. Which makes it, which makes factor trees all the more uh, a, a good tool to use, right? So factor trees are, are super powerful because it does not matter which order you use or to choose your, your, your factors, right? You can, you can start off with a two, you can start off with a four, you can start off with an eight, start off with a three. It really doesn't matter. You can choose any, any number to, to factor it out and you'll get the same prime factorization. That's what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is. I want to tell you about something else really similar to it. Fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay. By the way, in mathematics, there's several fundamental theorems. Uh, there's a fundamental theorem of arithmetic. There's a fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, and there's also a fundamental theorem of calculus, which uh, you, will, you would learn in a calculus class, of course. Um, I think that these are really important theorems to be aware of um, for, for pretty much um, anybody. I think that the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is possibly one of the most important theorems just to be aware of. You don't have to like have a super deep, thorough understanding of the intricacies of it, but I, I think that when you when you graduate high school, I think that, that having an understanding of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is really important, just to know that all numbers can be factored and that uh, the, that factorization is unique, that you, you can't factor a number in two different ways. There's only one way to factor a number. I think it's really important to know. Um, the fundamental theorem of algebra is a little more esoteric. Uh, that is, you kind of need to have some extra information to even understand what it's talking about. But the idea is that any number, or sorry, any polynomial of degree n can be factored uniquely uniquely into a product of linear factors, i.e. Uh, binomials. Okay? Um, of the form x minus a, okay? Now you might say, hold on one second. Uh, there is this, uh, this guy, you know, x squared plus x plus one, right? x squared plus x plus one. You can't factor that. 
right? I can pl I can plug that into the you know if if I wanted to you know the dis this, the, the discriminant on this one is is b squared minus four ac, which is uh, you know one minus four times one times one, so that's negative three. So it has a negative discriminant. You can't factor it. Not factorable. Okay. Well, remember when when we when we can't factor something, what that means is that um, what we would actually say is we would say there are no real roots, right? That's actually what we were saying. There are no real roots to this um, to, to this polynomial. Keyword being real, as in the roots are not real numbers. There are complex roots. There are complex roots. And complex as in the complex numbers. Okay? So that's what the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us, is that even if you have a polynomial that does not factor, even if it does not factor in the real numbers, it will factor in the complex numbers. So if A is not a real number, then A is a complex number. In fact, it doesn't even matter. A will always be a complex number because all real numbers are actually complex numbers as well. Okay. So, um, so that's 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 what the fundamental theorem of algebra is. Is that it's saying doesn't matter what polynomial you have, you can always factor it down into these these little linear linear factors. But sometimes those linear factors they might actually be complex numbers okay so that's uh, that's what we're going to talk about this week is how the fundamental theorem of algebra affects um, uh, our, our polynomials and, and, and how that uh, makes graphing a polynomial possible okay so we we actually can take a big polynomial that's like of degree 5 and you can graph that and you can actually graph that by hand and we're gonna we're gonna be doing just a little bit of, of graphing, and I think I think it should be pretty fun. Um, now I just want to say one one more point before we we end the class. Um, this is where complex numbers come from. Okay, so this isn't this isn't some like. Thing where it's like, oh yeah, no, we really wanted the fundamental theorem of algebra uh, to work, and the only way for it to work was was to say, oh, oh yeah, so uh, uh, oh yeah, maybe maybe it'll work in the complex numbers. It was it was actually that we had this idea that we could factor polynomials, and 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 we could always, you know, we could take a look at a quadratic equation, and we could factor it. But sometimes there was these pesky little polynomials like that that didn't factor. So. Um, a fellow named Gauss decided that how about how about we just say that we can factor that, and that's that's when 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 Gauss invented the complex numbers was to say okay I need these these little polynomials to be factorable so so he felt okay the real numbers they're just not good enough they they just are not good enough so Gauss invented his own set of of number systems or sorry his his own number system he invented his own number system called the complex numbers. And uh, uh, it came out of this desire to be able to factor any polynomial. So that's that's where the complex numbers actually come from. So uh, it's a neat little little tidbit of history. So um, this is what we're going to be talking about going forward. Um, and yeah, so good luck with your assignment. It's due on Friday. So uh, so let me know if you need any any help with it. Um, if if enough people are asking about a particular question, I may address it in the video, uh, or in a video this week, uh, instead of addressing everyone's problem uh, individually. So uh, if you do have questions about it, um, ask them as, as soon as possible so I can, I can start helping you out. Um, otherwise, yeah. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. As for the exit slip, um, Uh, let's see. Um, K 
Okay. How would you feel about uh, classes? I can't spell today. Classes every second day. Okay, because that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning towards for uh, classes next week. So just let me know how you feel about classes every second day, um, and I'll take that into consideration um, when, I, when I come up with a new schedule now that teachers are back in school. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well, um, and I will talk to you guys, I guess, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Have a good rest of your day.